walk in that light and walk in your purpose, but you also have to pray for it because this is a comfort that God has done. I think it's through chronic prayer is important in order to understand who you are and who you want to be because ultimately prayer is talking to God. Okay. So you pray and it kind of just unfolds. It does. It different ways. It takes a lifetime. And, you know, you know, you need to find out what the purpose is. It's deep. Um, I believe that God works through men. So it's not like always the answer will be given to you. Like, here you go. God is going to use somebody to explain what his work is. Because when you're sitting down reading the Bible, it's like, you're reading it, but you're not really understanding the underlying, um, like, the meaning of what you're reading. So you can, anybody can take the Bible and read, but it takes more to understand what it says. Um, I was going to say it's definitely a mixture of all of these things, because, um, I don't read the Bible, but God is complicated. We can't understand God, no matter how we try, we can't understand what the being of God is, we can't understand why he does some of the things, you know, that he, that he does. And, you know, I know for me, you know, I can't just get the answer by strictly just reading the Bible or strictly just praying or just like going to church alone is definitely a mixture of all of these things. For me, I know I could read something in the Bible and not process it in a certain way and then I could go to a Bible study and the Bible study really can just and at the same time, you know, I can go to church on Sunday and the pastor just blow me away again with something else. So I feel like as a Christian, you know, you need to be able to get that power, you need to be able to get that strength from from just a bunch of different places just not to hitting you at just a bunch of different avenues at the same time. I feel like that's the only at least for me, that's the only real way to grow you know, as a Christian and to really understand this and get different perspectives and different things. Good. And all of these things are avenues and all of these are ways that God can reveal himself to us. God does his people, God does his teachers, his people who study. You can go to the next slide. But the number one source for all of our guidelines and everything we do as Christians, we want to be Christ. I just get it directly from God. Why not? How did it come from God? Whether it's through his word. If we're going to get the teaching, somebody has to study the word of God. If it's going to come through the preacher, he has to study the word of God or he has to be led by the spirit, right? He doesn't just wake up and say, well, you know what? This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. And you go to some churches and they have this long list. Somebody was saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But the Bible says, study to show yourself approved, the work men unto God, right? The dividing word of truth. Study the word of God and you'll know what to do. Wow. Well, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the word of God, God's word itself, what's the word of God? The Bible has all the answers to every question that you can come up with. Do you believe that? Well, first, do you, do you believe that it's in there? Whether or not you know where to go and where it is, you believe it's in the Bible. All right, so where I'm going is the, the groundwork, the foundation for anything you want to know has got to be found in the Bible. So maybe if you go to somebody to help, if you go to a, a teacher, teacher, whatever it is, you know, or you're like, I can get it in the shower and I just pour it in you, it has to align with the Word of God. God is not going to give you something that's going to come to the Word. So you may not know where to go, but that's part of the other, uh, the part of the other option on there, was the Spirit of God. We are led by the Spirit of God. We go over my slides and this is with you. Uh, the Word of God and the Spirit of God. John 16, 13, somebody have a Bible? That's what I had up. Oh, that's what you had up? Yeah. I thought that's from Timothy. Okay, well good, I'm sorry. 
Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Lord is rebuking me for rebuking mercy, he will guide you into all truth. God will guide you. He shall not speak of himself, or whatsoever he shall, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show things to come. So the spirit is going to lead you as you're reading the Bible, as you're praying. But it's got to be found in the Word. So all of the questions that we ask tonight, there has to be some kind of answer that is in the Bible or that the Spirit of God is going to lead us into that the Bible discusses whether directly or indirectly. That's the foundation for all of the answers to all of the questions that we have. So if it's questions about drinking, whether it's questions about clubs, it, it, it's good to say, well, I feel that this is right, or I think that this is right. But the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. So you can feel or think something that may not necessarily be what God's will is for your life. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So the Bible is the foundation. So then how do you gain more spiritual <coughs> that can be you? How do you? Gain more spiritual that can be you. Okay. Well, let's see. How do you gain more spiritual that can be you? All right. Uh, hold on to that question. Okay. Hold on to that question. All right. Um, go ahead to the next slide. In order to understand our freedom in this world, we first need to understand, and this is where it's going to answer your question, because if you have to ask yourself the question, but you can just bring them up because it's going to take long time out there. Mm -hmm. you, have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself who you are and how did you get to be who you are. If you are a Christian, which is uh, to be Christ-like, if you are representing Christ, the Bible has the word Christian in there. They were called Christians because they looked at them. They were disciples of Christ. They were following Jesus. And so they started calling them Christians. They were, they were Christ-like. They acted like we were supposed to act like Christ. You know, they were here over there lying in the courtyard. <laughs> that wasn't necessarily Christ. That was not Christ-like. But their intent was Christ-like. Who, who are you? And what was the price that God paid to make of you who you are? We're not going to read all of these scriptures. Um, if you want, you can jot some of them down. But uh, let's just read one, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Who are you? Do you know that God made you a royal priesthood, a holy nation? The Bible says that. Probably in one of these verses here that I put up there. I just put some up that I knew random. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is being no service. So you are a living sacrifice. There's supposed to be some sacrificing going on in your life. That means that there's going to be some things that you're going to have to give up that you may want to do, but because it's a sacrifice, you're letting them go because you're a living sacrifice for God. There's a, there's a contending, there's a fighting that has to happen if you're a child of God. You believe that? What is, what is it? You said type of fighting. There's a type of fighting that, that happens that Christians are engaged in a fight. They're engaged in a warfare. Now, I know I'm going fast. I'm kind of breathing through this with your question. Christians are involved in a fight. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah. Who here is fighting? Who here is not fighting? Is there any scripture reference that says that we're fighting? Mm -hmm. Who do you think I'm going? Mm -hmm. I hear it. Here it's like, come on, somebody. Oh, it's right. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against power, spirit. I, I'm thrown off from the exact scripture. Here's the wickedness in high churches. Was there a hand? A who? Can I just say this? Sorry. But you guys, um, just put down, we're going to have to grab you, put down the name, and the email will be. Okay, good. And I'm, I'm, we got about 10 minutes. Is everyone okay with that? Try to get through this. So you guys can study. Um, we're involved in it. We're engaged in the warfare. The Bible, Paul said, contend for the faith. Uh, another, strip, another scripture says the kingdom of God is going through violence and the violence taken by force. These are, it's, 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 there's, a, there's a fight going on, which means that if you are not fighting, you need to examine yourself and say, well, Am I where I'm supposed to be? If the enemy is supposed to be fighting me, the devil is supposed to be fighting me, and I'm supposed to be contending for the faith, and I'm not contending, is there something wrong? So the idea of sacrifice, 
the idea of fighting for who God made you, if that's not going on, then you need to question yourself, are you really Christ-like? If, if everything is what you do in this world is just easy, and you do what everybody else does, the Bible says broad is the way, you know, broad is the path that leads to destruction, narrow, straight is the way that uh, is, is, is the right way. Uh, praise the Lord, because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going between versions in my head. But if, if, if you are the same as everybody else, if you can look at yourself, I had a mirror up there, if you can look at yourself and there is no difference between you and what everybody else is doing when you go to the club or the things that you do, then something is 